Radioembolization of liver lesions offers a minimally invasive, image-guided treatment option for primary or metastatic liver tumors confined to the liver. In this animation, we illustrate the procedure performed step by step, beginning with right groin access, although it could also be undertaken via left radial artery or wrist access. Initially, the skin over the right groin is marked, delineating the upper and lower boundaries of the right femoral head. Under ultrasound guidance, the common femoral artery is located for access, and the skin entry site is anesthetized with lidocaine. Following this, the right common femoral artery is accessed using a micropuncture needle under ultrasound guidance. Upon observing blood return, a microwire is inserted through the needle into the artery. Subsequently, the needle is exchanged for a transitional sheath, and the transitional sheath is advanced over the microwire. Then, the microwire and transitional sheath dilator are swapped for a larger and longer wire, which is threaded through the sheath into the aorta. Then, the outer layer of transitional sheath is exchanged for a vascular sheath. The dilator of the vascular sheath is removed. At this point, the sheath is aspirated and flushed with heparinized normal saline. Contrast may be injected to assess the patency of the common femoral artery and safety of the access. To ensure access safety, contrast may be injected, and to prevent clotting, saline infusion commences through the sheath. Specific types of curved catheters are advanced over the wire through the sheath into the aorta, and subsequently the curved tip of the catheter is formed in the aortic arch or at the aortic valve by pulling back the wire into the catheter and simultaneously twisting the catheter. Then, a long segment of the wire is re-advanced out of the catheter's tip and this combination is pulled down to the level where the celiac trunk goes off of the aorta. As the catheter is pulled down, the wire is simultaneously retracted into the catheter until only one centimeter protrudes from the catheter's tip. This adjusted setup is then utilized to selectively engage the celiac trunk. Following this, angiograms of the celiac trunk are conducted to delineate the anatomy of arteries that supply the liver parenchyma and the liver tumor. This process also helps in identifying any variant anatomical structures and collateral arteries that may be feeding the tumor. The wire is replaced with a combination of a microcatheter and microwire to enable more selective angiograms and precise mapping of the vessels supplying the tumor. Upon identifying and selecting the target vessels, the radiopharmaceutical technician 99 meters macroaggregated albumin is administered into the target vessel. These particles serve exclusively diagnostic functions, assisting in the mapping and shunt evaluation during the SPECT study. Importantly, they do not emit therapeutic radiation. Once the infusion of technetium 99 meters macroaggregated albumin is complete, the catheters are carefully removed and the access site is securely closed. Following this, the patient is moved to the nuclear medicine unit for a spec CT scan. The spec CT scan is instrumental in identifying the deposition of technetium 99 meters macroaggregated albumin within the tumor, lungs, and potentially other organs. This aspect of the procedure is key to assessing any extrahepatic deposition and ensuring the safety of subsequent radioembolization. The process of acquiring these images may last up to one hour. After acquiring the spec CT images, the patient is discharged and sent home. A follow-up appointment for radioembolization is then scheduled to occur within one to three weeks. In this interval, the interventional radiologist evaluates the volume of the tumor, the volume of perfused liver, and the overall liver volume. Using these measurements, the radiologist calculates the tumor to liver parenchyma ratio and establishes the suitable dose for radioembolization. Once this is confirmed, an order for the required radioembolic materials is placed with a designated company, ensuring their delivery to the hospital coincides with the day of the follow-up procedure. Upon the patient's return for radioembolization, access for catheterization is established at the groin or wrist, mirroring the method used in the initial procedure. 
Subsequently, the microcatheter is used to select the same vessel supplying the tumor. After confirming the correct positioning of the microcatheter, the specified and pre-ordered dose of radioactive particles, specifically Y90, is administered into the target vessels and the tumor, ensuring the entire contents of the vials are injected. Subsequently, the microcatheter and catheter are carefully removed to prevent contamination of the patient, operators and the work area. After this, the arterial access, either in the groin or wrist, is appropriately closed. After administering the Y90 particles, the patient is transferred to the nuclear medicine department for a spec ct scan. This step is essential to verify the precise delivery of Y90 particles within the tumor, comparable to the mapping stage. This imaging process can last up to one hour. After acquiring the spec CT images, the patient is released and discharged to home. A follow-up clinic appointment, complemented by cross-sectional imaging like MRI, is arranged for within the subsequent two months. This essential visit will evaluate the results and monitor the tumor's reaction to the radioembolization therapy.